when the idea of starting another symbol company came about, I knew this was going to be so healthy for, for dad and for mom. I, I, I encouraged him. I have great faith that no matter what Bob did, he would come out on top. He's driven to make this company as, as strong and, and as, as, um, as in his fashion as it can be. I just love this business and I love my family and it's my family and it's a family business. And the symbols that they're doing, they started this whole tradition and they carried the tradition that they had started years ago uh, of really caring about what they do, but the symbols are really nice. I, I just, I fell at home immediately with, with them. I've been a Sabian endorser for 24 years. So when they were still babies, I was still a baby and we kind of grew up together. Uh, they thought by the end of one year, I would go under financially. But I knew he'd be a success. Six hundred years of traditional Turkish-style symbol making has brought sultans, artisans, and musicians together. This is an epic tale. Robert Zildjian and his ancestors have journeyed from the Ottoman Empire to New Brunswick. A long journey filled with fame, wealth, and drama. Sabian is a, a manufacturer of uh, symbols to be used in all kinds of music. The, the creativity that Sabian has put in to symbols and drumming uh, has been really probably our strongest aspect. This innovative company with roots in 17th century Istanbul and 20th century Boston is located in a small village in New Brunswick, Canada. Yes, the, the, the impression is of serenity is, um, is very deep uh, uh, all around the, the factory in Meduktik. And um, I think that the contrast between uh, the trees, the corn, the nature, the eternity that seems to lie in this in this place, and then you, you you it seems that you are in a alien movie with machines, oil, metal, fire, uh, ovens, and and uh, and this contrast I think is very representative of the the Sabian uh, symbols. And you can explain that. It's, it's a feeling when you, you, you see the symbol and when you play it. I, I, I couldn't explain what it is, but I, I feel that, that there is a, something very, very deep for, from, from uh, uh, ancestral uh, knowledge and... Uh, the craftsmanship. Uh, yeah, craftsmanship. The knowledge, the you feel it when you... History you, you, in each of the symbols. Yeah, yeah. What is this ancestral knowledge? To find our answer, we must delve into the history of the Ottoman Empire. Many were drawn to Constantinople, now Istanbul, seeking fortune and fame. A center for art and commerce, the city was also the home of the Ottoman army. 
For centuries, the army was accompanied by Janissary marching bands. In battle, the ferociousness of the music inspired fear in their enemies and emboldened the army to victory. Making musical instruments for the army was a privilege. In 1618, Armenian alchemist Avidus and his metalsmith father were awarded this honor thanks to an accidental discovery. While trying to turn copper and tin into gold, Avidus stumbled onto a fusing process that changed his life and brought cymbal players an entirely new sound. The Sultan awarded Avidus with 80 pieces of gold, a quarter of a million dollars by today's standards. He was then prestigiously named Zildjian, which literally means son of symbol maker. No one could know how prophetic this new name would become. A few years later, Avidus and his father were given permission to open their own symbol making business. This was the beginning of a new era for the Zildjians and the official birth of now legendary K Zildjian symbols. Since this business has been in our family, uh, at least till the 17th century, uh, it's not uncommon to have that kind of a name. Inspired by the Ottoman army marching band, composers such as Gluck, Mozart, and Beethoven introduced symbols into their orchestras. Audiences were quick to appreciate this new instrument and musical style. For generations, the secret passed from father to eldest son. However, at the turn of the 20th century, Haratun Siljan rejected tradition in favor of becoming an attorney general in Constantinople. His son Avidus, named for his ancestor, decided to seek adventure in the land of opportunity, America. So the business and its secrets passed to Avidus's uncle. For Avidus, Life in America was good. He married Alice Sally Goodale and had two sons, Armand and Robert. And uh, then eventually he became the uh, uh, senior male member of our family. And being the senior male member, he was offered the uh, symbol making business. The offer came from Avidus's uncle. In a letter, he asked Avidus to return to Istanbul and take over the family business. And he really said he didn't think it was uh, that good a thing. Uh, and my mother, who was an old Yankee, she turned around and said, I think it's a wonderful thing. Why not get into it? Try it. Avidus accepted the offer on the condition that he run the business from Boston. And so, traditional Turkey-style symbol making came to the new world under the name of A. Zildjian. For the next five decades, K. Zildjian in Istanbul and A. Zildjian in Boston served musicians competitively and cooperatively. It was very fortunate for my father because at that stage of the game, in spite of the depression coming in very heavily, uh, good music, nightclubs, dance bands, American jazz became quite the thing. And when people were uh, depressed by the depression, and they certainly were, uh, they used to uh, take their joy out with the, uh, with music. As the company grew, so did Avidus' son, Robert. The first job I had, my father made me go to uh, the factory and, and uh, I was a sweeper at $2 a week. 
during the summer. And that was fine, except that uh, at the end of the first week, uh, I saw that 50 cents out of the $2. And under the second week, I saw another 50 cents, but finally I went to my father and I said, are you, uh, are you paying me $2 or aren't you? And he said, Oh, I'm paying you two dollars," he said. But uh, I put a dollar and a half in the bank, in the savings bank. He said, "You now have a bank balance," and I did. I really had a bank balance of three dollars. So I said, "Well, that's not enough for me," and I quit. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I went down and I shared a uh, paper route with another friend of mine, and we used to deliver uh, papers. Though he may have avoided it, Robert couldn't stay away from the symbol-making business for long. It was in his blood. At the age of 14, I had to return like my brother had to, uh, to be a, uh, an apprentice in the actual manufacturing of symbols. And started in on the uh, secret uh, process and my brother and I did almost all that sort of work. For a time, Robert and his older brother, Armin, got along very well. We were under one despot, and that despot was my father. <laughs> you know, when two of us are under a dictator, <laughs> you, you enjoy each other's co company immensely. We worked together very well back then. Things didn't always go that way as time went on. America's participation in World War II had a drastic impact on the production of symbols. During the war, uh, copper and tin, of course, would prime prime uh, metals for, for shells, bullet cases, and so forth. Metal rationing nearly resulted in the closure of the business. But ironically, the only thing that kept them going was serving the military. Uh, the only manufacturing we ever did was to uh, provide symbols for uh, army bands, navy bands, marine bands, and so forth. But the Zildjians were not just supplying the military with instruments. The brothers enlisted with the U.S. Army, where Robert would serve as an infantryman in Europe. After the travesties of war, Robert's homecoming was the beginning of a new chapter in his life. When I was 16, uh, Bob was back from the service and uh, his mother and father were having a party at their house. My mother and father were friends of his mother and father well before I was even born. And uh, I just always had known about Bob. And all these returning young people had the cellar, because that was all fixed up with a drum set and a bar and all the rest of it. And his mother and father's party was upstairs. And I was 16. I was too young for that one that one and I was much too young for that one so I sat on the cellar stairs and I watched the ones downstairs and on the way home I said to my mother I'm going to marry somebody like Bob Zildjian <laughs> so you see he really hadn't much of a chance <laughs> he met the woman who would be his partner in all things and had three children Billy Sally and Andy but like so many others the war had a long-lasting effect on Robert. When the war was over, I uh, had come back, and I wasn't too sure about uh, everything going right in my little head. So uh, some neighbors said, why don't we go hunting in New Brunswick for deer? And uh, just to make sure that I was pretty straight, I agreed to come along. And any problems I had psychologically with 
post-war uh, went away once we got into these gorgeous woods. So it was a big, um, what you might call a healing process. This was Robert's first encounter with Meductic, a place that would later become his refuge. Robert was focused on making the company the best in the world. With his wife always at his side, he made deals, attended exhibitions, and expanded the business. I was putting in 16 hours a day trying to get the marketing done, the sales done, the accounting worked out, uh, the processing and so forth. So I would run the shows with him. The two of us did almost all of the very small shows and I'd be there at the larger shows in New York City and Chicago, but we were the first Americans who ever showed at the Frankfurt Fair in 1958, I believe it was. A lot of people would come by just to look at the Americans who were there. At 45 years of age, Robert was unstoppable. 1960, Robert buys K. Zildjian factory in Istanbul. That was uh, the beginning of having a Turkish company. And for many years, I would uh, have to go over four or five times a year. 1968, he opens Asco factory in Meductic. We built a, uh, a small factory here. 1968. Uh, the main reason was to make a less expensive symbol. Another reason was that uh, at the time uh, we were pretty much uh, blocked out of the uh, British Commonwealth of Nations by heavy duties, terrific tariffs. 1975, he closes K. Zildjian factory and brings Turkish artisans to Canada. And then we closed the Turkish factory and brought the, uh, the Zildjians from there over here. So we started making K Zildjian, handmade symbols exactly the same way they were made in Istanbul. All seemed well for the business until the death of Robert's father in 1979, an event that would bring turbulence to the Zildjian family. A long legal battle ensued between the two brothers. Robert eventually left the company and received the Meductic factory as part of a settlement. I was running 80% of that business and I was told at the death of my father that I was no longer in power and I was out. That was terrible. Once again, Meductic brought an end to Robert's agony. Interestingly, Meductic is a Maliseet word meaning the end. Now, on his own, but resolute, Robert opened a new symbol-making company in 1981, Sabian. I was faced with uh, having to uh, manufacture a brand new symbol uh, and pit it against uh, a symbol company that was 350 years old, 370, whatever. And it was not uh, not the easiest thing in the world, but I had an awful lot of good friends in the business because I had been traveling all the time for the company. And uh, when people thought about Zildjian Company, they thought about Bob Zildjian because he was the one they met. The very last part of the negotiations with Zildjian Company, we were told we had to pick out a name. And the lawyer, as Bob mentioned, said, you can't use a Z, you can't use a D, and you can't use a J. Though that, that would be too close to Zildjian. So we thought, well, we've got to think up a name. And I said, it's got to be something personal, something that means something to us. Let's use our names. And Bob said, right, we'll make an anagram. Sally, Billy, Andy, that's good. And he said, use the first two letters, and there it was, Sabian. So that's how Sabian, the actual name, was evolved. We started making all of the uh, difficult symbols. 
And if I told you their names, you'd think I'm crazy. But we made the splash. We made the fast crash. We made the uh, Chinese. We made the swish. Uh, we made uh, the gongs up here and so forth. So that when we ultimately did have a split, I had the most skilled labor force of the two companies. Sabian thrived under his direction. Robert Zildjian had the ability to bring out the best in people. Employees and musicians were honored to be associated with him. Sabian makes the best symbols in the world. I mean, we're, we try to be the most innovative company. Uh, we certainly got some of the best players in the world. It's just coming to a company and experiencing the hands-on work, you know, that you know, that most companies don't do today. Our guest today is Tane, or Jeff Watts. He goes by Tane. Uh, he plays with Wynton and Marcellus, and, you know, world-renowned jazz band. One of the most rewarding parts of my job is actually to work with the artists that visit the factory to take a sound that they envision or have in their head and turn it into a, a musical instrument. They're really seeking seeking our input as far as designing, designing these instruments. Like a, like a crash ride or okay. something like that. So this is HHX style, right? Yeah. It's kind of like getting a getting a suit tailored, getting some clothes custom made. You know, you can have, you can have some input and and take some chances with with a with a direction. If you have any kind of idea with regards to design, you can present it to them, and they'll just they'll do their best to try to try to do it for you. Trying to get a drummer to express what he wants and put it into an actual product is actually one of our sciences and one of the strong points of Sabian. Pair of these with this higher profile and took them down to 13, I, you'd get some of the complexity. Okay, so so maybe I, maybe I would try to deal with these for now and then if, yeah, you, if, I mean, if, you're, if you're liking these, that's a good place to start and then we can work towards some 13s. Okay. And... Man, these these are these are keepers. These are like beautiful, man. And we just work. It's an ongoing process. We'll try a few things, and then the drummer, of course, will tell us, you know, we're on the right path or we're not. And and we just keep working back and forth until we get exactly what the drummer's looking for. You need that human element, that human element that comes with a handmade product. You need that, you know, someone to 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 touch the metal and deal with the metal and and. Just just mess with it and and then also listen to it, you know, listen to it and see if it see if it makes sense. It makes the artists when they visit the factory, it makes them really feel part of the family, and that's kind of what you know Bob Zillion instills in everyone here at Sabian that they're they're part of the Sabian family, and you, you know you can go through the factory and I think you can get a sense of that feel. You know this is a family business, and you can't help a family business where the people that work with you become part of the family too and what provides a family becomes part of the family <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. bob zoljan has taken us all on a trip that we would never have realized or most of us never realized even what we were good at in life until bob took us and found it in us How often do you get a chance to sit down with the founding members of a large company and, you know, eat hamburgers and hot dogs with them and have a piece of cake and, you know, really just shoot the breeze with them? Uh, the people up here, you know, they, 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 they don't want to leave the province. And if they can get a good job and stay in the province, to them that's really a wonderful thing. Am I a good boss? I try to be. That's all I can say. <laughs> Kissing booth. Hi, Sal. Hi, Andy. Good to see you. Hi, Bobby. Uh, you know what? Dealing with, with the staff is not that difficult because everybody really has the same goal in mind, and it's, it's everybody's quality-oriented. Quality Everybody is really pleasant, so it's easy. Um, 
uh, every time, every once in a while, you'll have a, a difference of opinion, but we work it out because that's just how we do it. Um, it's, it's a, it, I guess it would be somewhat like a, uh, um, a monopolistic democracy. So we have a king, but he listens to everybody. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my old man. Sabian is now going to be what Zildjian Company was to me as a child. I'd seen my dad and my uncle in Zildjian Company. I'd seen my cousins partake in Zildjian's business. I'd seen my brothers start in the melting room, in the testing room. And I knew that Sabian will be that same company to my children. Yeah, hey. <laughs> and what, what are we getting? Yeah. They insisted that you get a shirt, too. Yeah. Yeah, that'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people wonder why Bob Zildjian bothered to, to introduce a new symbol company after leaving his, his family business. Bob's rationale was that drummers deserve better symbols. And as Sabian has de demonstrated through years of award-winning innovation, they did deserve better symbols. We got people using more and more different symbols, all for different types of uh, composing uh, phases. And this we worked out within the classical end. Now the same thing applies with uh, a heavy metal sound. A, uh, some of the different rock and roll ca categories. We have, in addition to that, uh, some of the old handmade uh, sounds that we brought from Istanbul and manufactured still here by hand. And uh, these cymbal sounds are great for jazz. I'm Herman Roscoe Ernest III on drums, percussionist, trap player, all the above. Been using Sabian cymbals for about 18 years now, going on 18 years. I like the sound control cymbals they have, you know, which is a nice line. They have, I like some, I like, I like to have like control of a cymbal that's got a little variety of sounds. It's like the sound control crash ride. You can ride on it, you can get a dry sound, you can get a nice soft wash or a wet wash. You know, it's a whole lot of things you can do on some of these cymbals, you know. It all depends on the sizes. You think of 20 inch, 18 inch, 21 inch, different, you know, you have dry rides, bounce rides, and that's all. That's a lot, that's a lot of variety. That's only in two cymbals. The birthplace of all these symbols is the factory melting room. Off limits to all but a few, it still holds the ancient secret. This is the, the foundry or the melting room that Sabian makes all their castings from. Uh, we have a raw material in there, the copper and the, and the tin, and the castings are actually made up of 80% copper and 20% tin. They come from the melting room and they're weighed out and then they come over here and they put them in the bins and then depending on which model of symbol we're going to make, we've got the exact casting for that model. What you're looking at here is uh, one of our large ovens. It's propane fired. It runs at 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. And we fill this oven with up to 300 castings heat them up red hot and then we pass them over through this rolling mill and they get a little thinner and a little larger. This symbol 
has just come through the tampering and the circling and the pressing, and it just has a rough profile. And what we do here is adjust these hammers to hammer it in this fashion, and, and we adjust the profile of the symbol. We're big. We're 125 guys over there. And yet every one of them is doing something to help us, to help our team, to help Sabian as a whole. And for that, you have to be thankful for. The hammering actually compresses the metal, and it also changes the characteristic of the sound. When sound hits a, a compressed area on the symbol or a hammer mark, it speeds up, and when it comes out of that, it slows down, so you can adjust the complexity and richness of the symbol by how you hammer it, what fashion, uh, the, the thickness, the cup size, and all the other anatomy properties, so. The lathing is the next step. About 75% uh, of all our symbols have the brilliant finish, which is like a mirror finish. And this is a new machine that automated that process to make it more efficient for us to buff symbols. Once the symbols come from the edging, that, which is the last step in production, they come in here in batches and they're, all, they're marked what model they're going to be. And from here, we test the product. We test every symbol by hand. We're, we're very innovative and we're coming up with new products. And, and even with like Carl here today, like we're learning, you know, what the demands of the drummers are and we're, we have to move along with them in order to keep up. My name is Carl Allen. Originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, jazz capital of the world. I live in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I've been a, a Sabian endorser for 24 years. So when they were still babies, I was still a baby, and we kind of grew up together. A guy like Carl, um, he really has a specific sound in mind. He knows what he wants. And because he knows exactly what he wants, uh, you can't just send him something that generally fits that mold. He's got to come up and, and actually have us work on it. And you know, symbols of, for, for jazz drummer in particular, the most personal part of the drum kit is, is the symbols, particularly the ride symbol. So my primary focus and, and desire for coming up here today from New York is to really spend a lot of time trying to find a, a ride symbol. And uh, so we spent hours in the room just going through ride symbols. What we try to do is we try to um, be in the market find out what's needed, bring them up here into this little town where they've got nothing else but the symbols to try and play and uh, come up with new sounds that are, are viable. By working with artists, by working with regular drummers on the street, by, by being the type of company that goes out and talks to them, that makes them feel more close to us. So that's part of our whole our whole um, personality is that we share like a rig, like a drummer does. They share, this is how I do this. So we share that, we get feedback from them, and that works with drummers, with drum stores, with, with professional drummers, everybody. And that type of thing, that type of, of personality works its way throughout the whole company, and that makes us who we are. Very open, but still dedicated group of people. Once I went to the factory and I saw the whole process, you're a completely different person uh, as part of the art form, because then you connect the two art forms together, the performance side with the process of the instrument. It, it symbols an instrument. It's its own instrument. And yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm a changed person of when I hit that symbol, you know exactly what goes into it, and you can't be the same person anymore. I'd like to be the best symbol company in the world. I'm not that 
worried about being the biggest. But if we are the biggest, that's good too. But being the best is primary with us. And I think, uh, I think that's, that's uh, my motivation. And they are always full of surprises. Nice, very nice. They're not status quo company kind of thing. And the symbols that they make are really great. Having a symbol inventory is like owning a necktie store. You go in there and each one is a different sound. And when we do send out a whole bunch of these different sounds, it amazes even older musicians that have been there for years. They've never heard this sort of sound. When you look at all the different symbol models that are available from the likes of Sabian, you realize quite literally that there are hundreds. And for the layperson, somebody who doesn't play drums, they can't imagine why there are so many symbols. For instance, if you take hi-hats, generally speaking, hi-hats are available in 13 and 14 inch sizes. Those are the two most popular sizes. But it's a question of what's going to work in the music. I have about 60 different ways to do a rock pattern. And they incorporate the hi-hat, which is like this. So I play quarter notes on hi-hat. I can play eight, eight notes on a hi-hat. And I play the ands. Right? So what you do is take that, take any little groove like that, and add quarter notes on a hi-hat, eight notes on a hi-hat, and the ands. No matter what I do, that hi-hat becomes like a metronome, okay? And if you listen to a lot of great rock players, you know, it's in John Bonham and people like that, a uh, whole lot of love. The hi-hat's always going like that, and something we've been doing for years, you know? Sabian also works with artists to make signature symbols, bringing their vision and ideas for sound to life. I remember when I did in 1988, the Sabian Clinic Tour of Australia and the Far East. I was uh, on tour with uh, Dave McAllister, who was the vice president of sales and marketing. And I used to carry around the China symbol from China. And he said, why do you play that symbol? Can't we make that symbol? I said, well, none of your symbols sound like this yet. But I don't know, maybe you can make it. So we uh, went up to the factory and I brought my symbol with me and we came out with the first Sabian signature series symbol, was my China. They've been very innovating in, in you know, doing what artist needs are. They're very proactive and coming up with new things, new experiments, an open mind that, hey, somebody suggested this, let's try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, okay. So at least we try. And um, the relationship, the human side of a company. If I need something, I get approached and say, Memo, what is what you need? What, you, what would you like? And we, we are in touch constantly. It's a nice relationship. I, I don't have a need to, to go anywhere else. If you uh, get the modern musician today, he is looking for different sounds, different tones. Today, a drummer is no longer a, um, uh, a, just a rhythm keeper. He's also a solo musician. He's also a person that wants to have different tone grades and so forth. Do you have a favorite symbol? Absolutely, I have. What is that? This 18-inch uh, ozone symbol, HHX. I love this thing, but it, it doesn't really love me because I beat it too much. <laughs> but um, it's great because, you know, these holes, for some reason, you know, the whole 
um, the thinness of it uh, also give it a nice mix between a normal crash cymbal and a and a china type so it's a it sounds like in between both and i use it a lot because in the music that i play in, in the metal music i do a lot of writing on it and it just gives like a nice little wash constant wash during what i you know like to use as uh, blast beats or grind beats and what have you so this just got to be my favorite symbol right here Why do I use Sabian symbols? Boy, very, very good question. You know, I've been very, very fortunate in the process of, of my journey in life to have met up with this great company back in the late 80s. And Bob Zildjian, the owner of Sabian symbols, to be a visionary like Bob, to be able to see the fact that the sound need to change simply because music is changing. Artists will speak in terms of dark, you know, attack, you know, I want a sharper sound, I want a cutting edge. They'll use terms like that to the scientists. The scientists take those artistic terms and turn it into product, into actual scientific sound, that when you hit the cymbal, you hear the darkness. Robert Zildjian and Sabian continue to support drummers, young and old, students and professionals, helping to make their dreams come true. I think the music business is, is one I'd encourage people to take very seriously. What it is, is it, it's, a, it's a great medium in which to work. With its Lifetime Achievement Award, Sabian honors gifted percussionists whose performances have enhanced music and shaped the future of sound. It's very good to be a part of Sabian. It's such a great company and they make such a great product. And the fact that, I mean, I've been with them, oh goodness, a long, long time now. And, and they always make you feel like really welcome and special. and. You know, I'm, I'm really happy right now, actually. Yeah. I'm totally honored and humbled. She's one of the most significant uh, recognition in, in my career. Well, I feel, I feel very humble and I'm very honored. Sabian's a wonderful company and they've been a great help to us in the profession over the years. And uh, it's really, really nice to be recognized in this way. Is there any other group of musicians who will be <laughs> as social, who will share as freely, and when they get together to actually to thank and respect each other, will not do it on a level where, oh, I could never reach that, but come together as friends and talk, and actually as equals. It's a wonderful thing. Not only does Sabian support professional artists, they also have a very strong focus on inspiring young musicians. The uh, youth orchestra is in its 40th year of existence this year, which is quite a celebration for us. And we're very fortunate to be able to go to China this summer. Um, we're very grateful to the Sabian Symbol Company for the support that they've given us. And we're very happy that uh, the relationship between the two uh, institutions is um, cordial. Robert Siljan and Sabian continue their commitment to the young through their Sabian PASIC scholarships. The scholarship was established in 1999 uh, as the result of a discussion between Mr. Robert Zildjian and myself. 
The winner this year is Whitney Rowe from Memorial University in St. John's, Newfoundland. It's really helped me to become more confident in myself. You know, I, I wasn't sure if I could actually win the scholarship. When I heard back, I was just so pleased, you know, and I, I didn't realize the confidence that I actually had. I was so, I wasn't confident before, but after this, I just feel so great about it, and uh, I'm really proud of myself. An experience of a lifetime. Four days of intense percussion clinics, workshops, performances, and the largest exhibition of percussion-related instruments, music, accessories in North America. As Sabian recognizes and fosters development, musicians are also proud to be part of Sabian and associated with its founder, Robert. He's got a great personality. He's a very warm human being. Every time I see him, it's always, you know, hugs and a kiss on the cheek, and, and he's, a, he's a great guy. You know? Bob Zildjian and I have known each other, I hate to tell you, but probably 50 years. He was uh, a mentor. He was one of my top advisors, always gave me good advice, and uh, couldn't have been as successful as we've been without his help. Dad regards every single employee at Sabian as being very, very important to the success of Sabian. And this isn't anything new. This is the way that Dad is just as an individual. Every single person in the world makes the world as colorful as it is. He's driven, he, he's, uh, he's passionate, he knows what he wants from his company, he knows what he wants from the product. He knows how he wants to be, um, how he wants the company to be received. Well, he's still the heart, he's still the heart of the company, yep. I did a job, finished it, and uh, the, the, uh, the, the company is, is the, the way I want to be remembered. A company rooted in ancient tradition and innovation. The evolution of Sabian will continue because to the symbol makers, sound has always mattered.